I'm Tina Quintana. This is the tiny house I built. Its name is the Dog Star and we're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. If I could not create art, I don't think I could exist. I really don't. I actually once broke my arm and I even tried to knit with my toes because I couldn't stand it that I could not knit. Just gonna complete my 26th year of teaching textiles and practical arts. I've only been teaching about three years now. I really only work with natural materials and if I can grow it, that's the best because then I have my own supply. So I spin, I knit, I weave, crochet, like everything that I can do with fiber, I do. This is a quilt I'm working on, it's hand sewn. These are all plant dyed colors. This is indigo and Osage orange and matter root. So we have roots and leaves and bark. It's just amazing. You know, the colors all go well together. When I first heard about tiny houses, I was like, oh my gosh, that's everything. It's my little space. It's portable. I can design it. Once I got excited about them, it's like, okay, well, what would I use it for? Would I live in it full time? Well, at that time, you know, I had my family and my mother we were taking care of and pets. And I thought, all right, I'd have to have a big one. And I don't want a big one, I want a little space. So what else could I use it for? And I started thinking about guest house, studio. And then as an art teacher, that's the first subject to go when the schools are making cuts. So I thought, all right, this could be a place like traveling nurses. I could be a traveling art teacher. My tiny house is eight and a half by 18. And the reason it's called the dog star is so when I travel, when my family looks up at the stars and I look up at the stars in my tiny house, we're seeing the same stars and we're together. My tiny house was a shell that we bought and my husband and I finished it out in 2017 and it's from Liberation Tiny Homes. My tiny house is parked in the backyard of my big house where I live with my husband and my daughter and my yappy little Pomeranian named Barani. It's a historic house, it's over 150 years old and we live in a historic town right by the Susquehanna River. So on one side of my tiny house is my beautiful vegetable and dye garden, and on the other side of my tiny house is my bigger studio. My bigger studio is mostly a wet studio. I do a lot of my dyeing in there, I do wet felting, I do wet, goopy, gooey kinds of things in there that I don't want to do in the tiny house. Come on into the Dog Star Tiny House. Welcome to my tiny house. It's about 160 square feet. It's my studio, my family space, travel home, you name it. I've done a lot of things with this tiny house. Right away when you come inside, you're in the spacious living room for such a small house, I would say. I have a nice love seat couch, which actually folds out into a twin size bed, which is pretty amazing. So they're sleeping downstairs as well as the loft. I have an art cart here. One thing about me is not only am I an art teacher, but I do art all the time. And not only that, I do everything. Fiber, painting, clay, wood carving, you name it. Initially, I had some little boxes that were stacked and it was hard to find my things. So these carts, they're pretty popular. This cart is excellent. I can get a lot of stuff on here. This is my Envy heater, excellent heater. I highly recommend it. I've tried several different heaters and this is great. It's completely silent. The cold air is pulled through and it comes out warm here. So you don't have a fan blowing hot air right here where you're sitting, but yet over there it's cold. It really evenly heats the space. I really love that. It's been great. This looks like just a stand, but there's actually a table there. It folds up on both sides so I can have just a little place to sit or I can extend it all the way along the couch. Some of my other art supplies that I store 
you'd be surprised. Onion skins, I actually use them for plant dyeing. Makes a beautiful yellow color. And eucalyptus. Over here, I have this great little cabinet, which is an awesome storage option also. I have lots of candles in the top, but I also keep more art supplies. I have beading and all kinds of things. It's great. It's also a great place to keep my computer. One thing a lot of people forget is that you really do need to leave some open space to put things and take them off. Can't fill everything up. I try. One thing that was really important to me as a traveling teacher is not only that I have places to put the art supplies that I use, but storage. So I designed this loft specifically to fit these totes because they hold my samples that I teach with and extra supplies. So they're perfect. And when I travel with the house, I don't even have to take them down. These handles here are excellent when I open my ladder and I need to take things down, I actually hold on to that. And it helps me grab the totes with one hand and bring them down. I was looking for a place to teach, to travel to. I wanted to experience living in the house full time. We had had it for a little while already. It had been a rental, then it was here, and we were just kind of using it just to hang out in, but I really wanted to experience living in it and see, did I really get it right? Did I really get all the things I needed? And what is it like to really cook in here and you know use the water and every day? Like, how will the house hold up? How will it be? So yeah, I applied for a teaching job up north, about two and a half hours from here. And they offered me the job, and I said, well, I'll take it if you can find me a place to park my tiny house. But yeah, don't worry, we'll figure it out, and they figured it out. So I had a place to park for two and a half years. It was great in a colleague's backyard. It was nice and quiet. It was so amazing. I couldn't believe that I had figured it out so well. But again, I didn't jump into it. I spent like a good two years really thinking about what would I need. It was such a great experience, and I'd go home on weekends, which was really nice. So I was still very connected with my family. It was awesome, and then COVID hit, and then I came home and taught from the tiny house, which the kids loved. They're like, you have a cabin in your backyard? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. <laughs> on this side of the living room is my pride and joy, my built-in bookcase. When I get home after a long day, everything is right here. If I need a new knitting needle, it's right there. A certain book, sewing supplies, and of course my yarn stash. Holds everything. If I can't find what I need at this bookcase, all I have to do is slide over to my art cart. It's great. Not that I'm lazy, but sometimes it's nice to have things close by, and that's one of the pluses of a tiny house. Over here, moving into the hallway, this is another pride and joy of mine. As a teacher, I have to dress professionally. I can't roll all of my things up and put them in baskets, although I prefer that. This is great storage. Hanging clothes, folded sweaters, all kinds of things that I can put in here. Not bad for an 18-foot house. It also goes all the way back to the wall. And on this side, I have another closet, believe it or not. This is a folded clothes closet and a shoe closet and slippers. That's really helpful. Everything on the stairs is used as well as it can be. I have my food containers, and this one I call my garage. It has my Mr. Buddy heater in case the power goes out, so I have a heat source. And then I have a little electric fireplace just for that nice mood at night, and I have tools, and I also keep my peat moss for my nature's head back there. The other thing I really like a lot is this drawer down here. It's my toolbox. So I have everything right there. While we're in the hallway, you'll notice I have a second Envy heater. It's not really necessary most of the time, but when it gets into the 20s and really cold, I like to add a second heat source. It also heats up the bathroom where my plumbing is. Moving into the kitchen now, you'll notice I have an L-shaped kitchen. That was really important to me because I wanted it to feel like a separate room from the rest of the house. I'm like a galley kitchen where it's on both sides. So I started here with the refrigerator. I wanted to keep it towards the edge of the kitchen so I could really focus on putting the things in here that I love. We lifted it up because it's a short refrigerator. So we just built this little platform 
Um, so I don't have to bend down to go into it. And the nice thing is it gave me a little more storage underneath. One of my main cooking sources was a toaster oven. And then I have this counter space. Now one thing that I didn't realize at the time was my windowsill would be so close to my sink and water splashes. So I went to my favorite pottery place in Vermont and I bought these beautiful tiles and I just line them along the wall so the water can splash against them and it's really easy to wipe it off. You'll also notice my cooktop here, which is my other source of cooking. I don't have an oven or a built-in stove. I just have a one burner cooktop and the toaster oven. It's a little close to the curtain, but I always remember to pull it away. One thing I like about cooking on something like this too is I can move it anywhere that I want to, depending on how much space I needed for prep, which is really great. I decided on using an open floor plan, even though I travel a lot. Um, there aren't too many things that I have to pack away, so this is the one thing that I decided. You know, I have four cups, I have four plates, four bowls, how hard is that to put in a box when I want to travel? And it looks so beautiful. I love to showcase my favorite pottery. So as you notice, there's not a lot of room here. And one thing that we were able to do to remedy that was, these are stock cabinets that we bought. And we actually cut four inches off the back. We were a little scared to do that because we thought, uh-oh, what if they fall apart? But that extra room would make such a big difference that we decided to try it, and it worked. It limited a little bit the size of the sink that we could put in here, but it was perfect. There's so much more room. Back here, you can see we left that four inches in, so we still have a place that has a lot of space. Another thing about the L shape and having everything right here in its own space is everything is so close. So when I need a dish, it's right here. Everything is within reach. When I put things away, they're all right there. If I'm busy and food's cooking and I need to grab what I need for the next step, it's all right here. One nice thing about buying stock cabinets is you can pick and choose what you want and what will work best in your space. This cabinet here is a Lazy Susan. Sometimes I call it a Lazy Kate, but it holds so much stuff. I mean, I could just put everything. I could probably fit all of my dishes and all of my dry goods in here. Such a great thing. And when you think about it, there's all this counter space that underneath would have been wasted. Turning around to here, have my spice racks. And if you notice, I have a place for my broom and my Swiffer, but it wasn't always meant to be that way. Originally, I was going to have one of those sliding barn doors. So we left this space. I probably would have took the counter all the way to the wall if not. But then I thought, where am I going to put my spices? And I found these great racks. And I thought, you know what? Those are more important than a door that slides. So we put up the spice racks and it turned out to be a great place to put my broom. So that was actually a happy accident. Now, this is not a usual door. This was actually a temporary door. It opens like this. It was just until we found a door that would fit this space, but after using it for a while, we realized that we really liked it. One nice thing is you can kind of prop it open a little bit, which gives you a little bit more backspace when you're in the bathroom. So I don't know if we'll change it. We might. From the start, when you have a tiny house, it's very clear. They're not legal in most places. And where are you going to park it? And how are you going to park it? I almost didn't build because I was worried about, well, you know, I want to park it legally. I want to do the right thing. So maybe we shouldn't do it. But then I thought, no, I have to because I need it. I need it. It's going to serve, you know, my traveling. It's going to serve things at home that we'll use it for. I just have to do it. And so that, of course, makes you get involved in advocacy. And it makes so much sense to tiny housers, but it's, it's helping other people who don't have the experience of it to really understand that. I think the biggest thing is just get them in here, number one, and make sure they know the statistics of how difficult housing is, how expensive it is. So when we first saw this house, it was right at the street and I thought, forget it, nope, can't do it. But then we walked through the house to the backyard, which is huge. And this is how this town is built up. The houses are on the main street. Everyone has a really long yard. We have almost an acre here. And then there are these alleyways 
So it's a walking town. Everybody walks around too. So in the alleyways, you have oftentimes parking and huge lawns, garages, cottages. There's all kinds of things like that. So for me, when I see all that space, I think of people that I know who are looking for a place to park. And I think I can park beautiful houses here that won't take anything away from the neighborhood. And there's plenty of room for them. There's so many people here, too, that could do that. I mean, we've even considered renting out the big house and living in the back in the tiny house. So, again, even though we own this house, we can't do that yet. So it's not just advocacy, you know, for ourselves, of course. It's for ourselves, too, but really it's for the greater good of the town. So check out how I was able to get everything I needed into this tiny little bathroom. Right here, I have a pretty good sized shower with a nice pebble floor. Feels great on your feet and they look beautiful when they're wet. Now notice how shiny the walls are. I had a special coating sprayed on. Almost six years of taking showers in here and the walls look just like they were brand new still. If you wanna have wood walls, you have to think about that. Over here, I fit a pretty good sized sink in here with lots of storage and soft closed drawers. On this side of the bathroom where I have my nature's head, I wanted to make sure there was enough room so the wall is tapered. Just to let you know, that's also why we needed a little bit more room in the kitchen because the taper bumped out the bathroom a little bit. You'll also notice I have my hot water on demand heater in here. And it doesn't look beautiful, but it's really functional. I always know what temperature the water is going through it in the winter when it's cold. I also can tell if the water is freezing and I can make adjustments even while I'm in the shower. I just jump right out, turn it up a little bit and jump back in. I would not want to run outside to the back of the house and do that. So everything's right here, mirrors. And again, with my theme of the house, you'll notice the stars on all of the towel racks and hangers. So going up to the loft, I have a staircase, which is great. One thing you do have to think about is how tall the risers are. So how many stairs do you actually need to get to the top? It took a little bit of figuring out. These are a little tall, but once you get used to it, you really don't even notice it. And having the railing really helps a lot. One of my favorite places to sit is at the top of the stairs. The first time I came into the tiny house when I could go up to the loft and I sat here and looked down, I, I'm afraid of heights and I thought, uh-oh, I don't know if I can do this, but it was too late because I already had the house. So the way I got over that was I just would sit here every morning when I got up and I started to really like it. I like the bird's eye view. So here I am in the loft. It's a nice cozy space for sleeping. I have nice dark curtains. A good friend of mine makes dream catchers. So I have my moon and my star to help me when I'm sleeping. This is a full-size bed, but it certainly could fit a much larger bed. I wanted to make sure to leave room for my books. I have books in here. I have books on the side. I'm always in the middle of like 10 different books. So if you're worried about crawling on the hard floor, all you have to do is get yourself some padded mats. These are the best. They've been in here for almost six years now, and they're like brand new still. They're heavily padded. I have no problem crawling on my knees at all. And anyway, it's just a few steps to the bed. A couple things to make it more comfortable when I'm hanging out up here and not just sleeping is I have a folding table over there so I can sit and do computer work. When I'm sitting on the bed, I can also have a little snack while watching a movie. And then I have a little table over there if I want to sit here and work on my computer. If I just want to sit up, face the window, that works as well. I love sleeping up here. It's so cozy. It's nice and dark just the way I like it. And I also like to move the curtains late at night and look out at the moon and the stars. It's just the perfect place. It feels like being in a tree house. And when it rains, the pitter patter on the roof is amazing. It just lulls me right to sleep. I have mentioned the idea to a couple of officials in town. They all like the idea, but it's when you get down to the nitty gritty and there's zoning and it's set and it has been like this since 1600, whatever, since the town was incorporated. It's just a little tricky. This town is waking up. 
there are newer people who are joining the town council. I don't want to just put an age thing, but there are a lot of younger people who do want more housing. And there are also a lot of older people who have bigger houses who would love to live in a tiny house and rent out their big house so they can stay on their own property and not go to senior housing. So it meets so many different things. I want to put a slideshow together. I already started taking pictures of places and the points of why tiny houses would work. And I want to have a really good presentation for them the first time. If you go in, you haven't done your homework and you can't answer the questions and you're not sure, so why would tiny houses be great here? Um, well, because they're great, but you really should have a plan because I think it, that makes a big difference because it's that much harder than to come back and bring all these other things. I am a member of Thea and I have some friends in the area who are also. And so we're coming together and things that we learned through Thea, we're discussing and incorporating into our ideas. Even if I can't do all the footwork that I want to do right now, any amount that I can do I think is helpful and is helpful to me too. I can't even imagine like not being involved with tiny houses. I'm so glad I did it. It's really not just about the individual, like you buy a house and you live in it and you're part of a neighborhood, but this is so much bigger because just by having a tiny house, you're an advocate really. And you can't help but get involved because you see when you're in it, you know, just how well it fits so many lifestyles and how much it can offer people. And by the way, it's funny because my nickname when I was growing up, I was a little thing, was tiny. <laughs> and, and here I am in a tiny house, so yeah, I can't imagine it. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.